Okay. Yeah, right. So thank you for coming again. Um, uh, with the delay in the in the beginning. Okay. So uh, today uh, we'll be talking about a topic here: troubleshooting internet uh, issue. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, many of you uh, know this thing, yeah, uh, called internet. <laughs> Why? Because it's very popular technology for for um, for internet internet uh, connection. Okay. Um, my name is Ahmad Mardiansha and uh, I'm from GLC Networks Indonesia. Oh, and here's our agenda. Wow, uh, I haven't updated the slide. Okay, let me do it later. Okay, we'll update it later uh, when we upload the slide. Okay, uh, introduction for those who are new. We are GLC, Gadalintas Chakrawala. We are based in Bandung and our areas are training in IT consulting. Uh, we are doing Microtik, Ubiquiti, Linux, and then uh, some programming. We also do our own uh, products named GLC Redis Manager. And then we do uh, regular events like uh, what we are doing today. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Ahmad Pardiansha. I'm, I'm based in Bandung as well. Okay, um, I'm doing Linux. I'm doing Microtik, uh, Ubiquiti, Cisco, uh, PHP. Yeah, uh, Postgres, PGSQL and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, we are using lots of technologies in order to provide solution for our customer. I'm doing uh, Microtik for living, okay? I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm doing training, uh, at, uh, a certified trainer, and so also I teach uh, Microtik, Linux, and other networking technologies, as well as programming. <clears throat> I have a LinkedIn account here. Okay, so hopefully if you have LinkedIn as well, <clears throat> we can connect. Uh, what else? Yeah, this is our past experience. Uh, mostly we are doing uh, network network stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, billing, integration, doing some uh, IoT. So um, yeah, it's uh, like a data processing uh, or some programming. Uh, build uh, another wireless here, uh, network update, revamp, develop billing solution. So it's programming. Uh, Migration from <clears throat> bridge network to routed network like this one. Okay, so yeah, that's what we did in the past. <clears throat> in the past five years, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. But previously, um, yeah, I've been working since 2004, yeah. So this is our webinar. Um, if you want to be a presenter, uh, we are really welcome, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to be expert. So this is just a forum for sharing technologies, uh, sharing information about how you use your technologies and perhaps uh, others can benefit from you. Okay, so, oops. Uh, yeah, thank you <clears throat> for coming again. So please introduce yourself. At, uh, at least we know where you're from, okay? Uh, yes, uh, usually there are people from um, Africa, from uh, Europe, or from Asia, from India, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, or Nepal, or yeah. Please, please uh, introduce yourself here. <laughs> uh, you don't have to. You don't have to uh, uh, shy for for introducing yourself. Okay, so yeah, uh, please introduce yourself. Where you are from? Yeah, uh, yeah. If if you have background, and then uh, you can share here as well. If you want to know something and then uh, we can, you just let me know. And then everyone here is, is very nice. <laughs> uh, perhaps some of them can help you as well. Okay, so moving on. So prerequisite, uh, yeah, this is just a, a basic uh, knowledge. Well, that depends on how how is your level. Yeah, but at least it's the prerequisite for this presentation is not that hard. Okay, at least you know how networking works, uh, how internet works, <laughs> just as simple as that. Okay, so let's start. So we know that uh, uh, we are part of the internet, okay? 
So we connect to the internet actually uh, in order to be part of the internet. So this is you, yeah, and this is your ISP. And then you connect uh, to others, yeah, through your ISP, okay? So here you need an addressing, yeah, uh, which is the uh, layer three addressing, which is the IP address, internet protocol address. And then if we see uh, in topological point of view, um, the physical connection usually looks like this. So you have a customer and then you connect to the, uh, the nearest router, the provider edge, usually we call it PE, provider edge. And then uh, we have uh, selections of uh, access network here. Uh, you can use GPON, wireless LAN, fiber optic, GSM, whatever, okay? And then from there, you connect to your border router and then connect to other networks. And then, yeah, you just be part of the internet as simple as that. Okay, so this is how the connection looks like, okay? So again, <laughs> internet is very, very physical, yeah? Um, you need to have a physical um, uh, uh, things in order to connect from A to B, okay? Even though you are wireless, okay? Uh, wireless needs uh, physics, which is the electromagnetic uh, wave in order to connect from your device to the access point. Okay, so again, internet requires physical connection. Either it's the things that you can see or the things you cannot see. We are using physics, yeah. So it's not like something, something uh, supernatural <laughs> for the internet. No, it's not, okay. Uh, um, I had to join yours, I'm from Bordeaux, France. Oh, okay. Wow, it's quite far. Thanks for coming. So at least uh, we know uh, where you are from. <laughs> okay, welcome to the GLC Networks webinar. Okay, uh, also when we uh, model the, the way we communicate through internet, usually we refer to our OSI layer. And then on each, <clears throat> the, the way we do, uh, uh, the, the reason why we uh, model our, our communication a system through layers is because each layer is responsible for for particular uh, function. So it's similar to like uh, you have a organization a system. Yeah. So this is your boss. Okay. Big boss, BB. Okay. <laughs> and then you have a marketing department here. You have finance, you have operational, you have R&D. So every, every department has their own function. Yes. So similar uh, concept with the um, with communication, uh, but uh, we are not uh, put the functions into a vertical way like your organization does. Uh, we are doing here in the uh, vertical manner. Okay, so we start, we stack all of them and then we start from top to bottom. Okay, so that's why in internet, we, you, we have a uh, we have a, a, a process called encapsulation, yeah? So this is our data, okay? And then the data will be wrapped, will be added by, um, by header, yeah? So from here to here, yeah? It's called segment or datagram. So segment if you use TCP, datagram if you use UDP, and then by um, moving forward, uh, there will be additional header, yeah, that needs to be added to your your uh, previous data, and then this one is called packets. And uh, finally, uh, before we are sending the uh, data through the media, okay, so there will be another header here, okay, and also trailer, and then this one is called frame. Okay, so that's the uh, encapsulation process. Okay, so if we refer to OSI model, we have seven layers, but uh, in the implementation, uh, we are using TCP IP stack, okay, the implementation. So some of the layers here are combined. Okay, so this is what we use when we implement the concept, okay. So application layer and network interface layers uh, are actually is a, it's a combined, it's a merged layer. <coughs> from the OSI model. But when we talk about OSI, uh, when we talk about the uh, interoperability, when you talk to your friend, to your colleague, we always refer to OSI model, not the TCP IP model. So when we say it's a problem in layer five, 
it means that oh, okay, it's a session layer. If uh, if we say it's a, a layer seven, it means that well, it's an application layer. As simple as that. Okay. So this is just review. So I assume you already know this one, just for refreshment. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is just a this is an example of layer four header. Okay. Uh, it can be TCP or UDP. And so on layer three, we have uh, IPv4 and IPv6, okay? And then also we have Ethernet header, the, the things that we are talking today. So you have a payload here, okay, coming from the upper layer. So in, that includes the packets, then and segment and the, what, what else? Uh, or, or datagram, okay? And then the data itself. Okay, so uh, when we send, Okay, so we will add a MAC header here. Okay, so we have a destination MAC address, source MAC address, and then we have ether type. Okay, that explains uh, what is happening on upper layer. So the, the purpose for ether type is, is to explain the payload. Okay, and then we have a, a trailer here for CRC checksums. Okay, so that was the Ethernet header. Uh, if you use Wi Fi, this is how it looks like. Okay, so the same concept you have a header here. Okay, and then you have a, a payload, and then you have a trailer. Okay, same concept. If you zoom here, and then there will be <laughs> a, a, a additional explanation for. For, for that, okay? So this is a two bytes. Two bytes means one byte equals to eight bits. So two bytes equals to 16 bits. And then here are the explanation of those 16 bits. And uh, yeah, so if you notice that uh, there is a, the, uh, there's a big overhead, There is a big overhead um, in the in the network communication. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, computer networks. So, as you can see, uh, this is the. For example, if you are sending through through uh, Ethernet uh, technology, so this is this is what you send. Okay, from here to there. Okay, so this is what you send. This is what your Android, this is what your Mac sends. This is your Linux send, okay, from here to there. But actually the data is only this one, very small portion of it. So that means <laughs> in, our, um, in our communications, uh, this overhead can take up to uh, 20 to uh, perhaps uh, uh, 30, percent of our communication. So this is called a signaling. In telco, we call it signaling. So signaling is additional data uh, in order to reach the destination. Okay, so we, we spend a lot of things uh, for, for signaling, like telling the router that, okay, this is the, 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 the destination of of, of the packets, like the destination IP address and then the source IP address so that when the packets are uh, sent back, we know uh, where your IP is from. So uh, yeah, that was the um, encapsulation process. And then down we have uh, ethernet uh, technologies here, our favorite. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, let's talk about ethernet. So this is how the ethernet card looks like, okay. Uh, and then we have one, two, three, four ports, and then each port is handled by uh, uh, integrated switch uh, chipset. Okay, so it looks like it's from VIA. Yeah, VIA. VIA is uh, one of a chipset producer. So yeah, uh, usually uh, yeah, a good uh, Ethernet card has its own processor for every every port so that's why that makes the 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 the, the hardware is expensive here yeah, because this one this small things here is is quite expensive that that determines <coughs> uh, the price <laughs> yeah <clears throat> ideally one port is one chipset okay but in some chip one well one chipset is doing all of them yeah 
Well, the spec itself is defined by 802.3. Uh, the media can be coaxial cables. I, I use it uh, when I learn uh, computer networking for the first time. I used coaxial cable, yes. Yes, coaxial cables, the, the coaxial cables that you use in your antenna, yes. And then <laughs> moving on to a twisted pair, and then uh, it's very common. Uh, yeah, uh, now uh, we have a uh, cat. Three, get four, get five, get six, get seven, get eight, cut whatever. Okay, so those are twisted pair uh, based on copper uh, wire. Yeah, um, and then we have a fiber optic. Okay, so at that time I was I learned uh, networking in 1990s, late 1990s, and then at the time we use. We use uh, coaxial cables and then <laughs> we use uh, twisted cable. We don't use fiber optic because that one at that time is very expensive. Okay, uh, with the internet, we only use uh, two kind of devices. Okay, either you use bridge or switch. Uh, same thing. Bridge only two ports. Okay, switch can be uh, more than one port. Okay, at that time, switch is kind of uh, expensive around. For example, uh, 100 uh, USD, uh, but the uh, hub is much, much more cheaper at the time. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> you cannot find a uh, hub anymore. Yeah. Because uh, everything is, is based on the uh, switch. Yeah. Uh, hub is very, very rare to be found. Okay. So that's the device. Okay. Yeah, everyone likes it because it's very affordable, yeah, aka cheaper, easy to install, yeah, very easy as well. Easy maintenance, okay, if it's broken, just replace the cable, for example. If the crimping is not correct, you do it again, and then the crimping tools and then the RJ45 uh, plug is, is not that not that expensive. Is, 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 is very, very affordable. So that's why everyone likes it. When I learned microtech, uh, I'm uh, sorry, when I learned um, uh, networking, uh, yeah, uh, at that time, uh, we there, there is a technology called FIDI, F-D-D-I. Yeah, in our campus, we use this one as well, but yeah, cannot last long because maximum FDDI is, is 16 Mbps. Yeah, if you, if you ever heard about token ring, so yeah, so this is one example, okay? When I learned uh, Cisco for the first time, yeah, we still learn this, this kind of thing called FDDI or token ring, <laughs> but it doesn't last long, okay? <coughs> yes, in our campus, we use uh, FDDI token ring, but cannot last long because of the limitation of the speed. Okay, so we prefer ethernet because it's cheaper and then it can deliver more bandwidth. So how ethernet works? Well, everyone knows that with uh, CSMA CD, carrier send multiple access. So we have a shared medium here. Okay, so this is the medium. Okay, so this is the medium, 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 and then it's shared. Okay, shared among others. So it means that if somebody send, everyone cannot send. So only one can send at one time, yeah? Especially if you are using hub, okay? So if, if there are two hosts sending at the same time, here and here, and then there will be a collision, okay? So before A is sending data, B is sending data, so um, host, need to check the shared media if it is empty or not. Oh, okay, this is empty. Okay, I'm sending now. And then we think also the same, okay? <laughs> A is, is thinking, oh, okay, it's free. B is also thinking, it's also free. Oh, okay, and then we are sending at the same time. And then so the voltage here will be higher, okay? Uh, yeah, the voltage uh, higher because of the collision. So that's why we know where the collision happens, yeah. So <clears throat> um, for example, this is uh, a, a, B, this is C and D. So C and D never know <clears throat> when A or B is sending. So never care about that. 
Okay. So everyone knows that when a collision happens. Hello, can everyone see? Um, can, can you hear me? Hello, can you say something? I got problem with my connection here. Uh, I have a class in the morning as well, and then we had same problem. Wow. Okay, so you can hear. <laughs> you can hear again. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's let's start. Where were we? Oh yeah, here it is. Wow. Yeah. Same. I'm not. I'm not in. Uh, I'm in Sumatra right now. So previously, a few days ago, all internet connections here are okay. Just for today, is very very bad. Uh, okay, let's continue. Yeah. So. <laughs> This CSMACD is very important uh, yeah, for you to understand how the internet works, okay? So here's the basic principle of how internet works is CSMACD. So uh, by having CSMACD is very, very simple. If no traffic, send. If there is a traffic, wait, as simple as that, okay? So with that, <laughs> with that simple uh, principle, there you have a collision domain and then broadcast domain. So collision domain is the area when collision happens. So it can use of any frame. So uh, in this uh, picture, we can see that all of them are in one collision domain because this one is half. Okay. Also the broadcast domain. So the difference is uh, collision domains, we can use any frame, the but broadcast domain happens only uh, broadcast frame. So uh, in Ethernet, we have previously, we know that uh, there is a, there is an Ether type here, right? Okay, so we have an Ether type uh, information, Ether type, um, oh, Ether <laughs> type uh, 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 flag, okay, or field. Uh, so that the, the purpose for ether type is to explain the play, the payload. Okay, so what the payload looks like is it IPv4 or IPv6 or is it the broadcast or is it multicast? Okay, that's the purpose of the uh, ether type uh, field. And then uh, if you think about Wi-Fi, well, we have a CSMA CD for Ethernet. And then we have CSMS CA for Wi-Fi, and they are different. Okay, they are different. Guys, if you have a questions, and then uh, just type here uh, your question in the group chat. Okay. Yeah. So next things is the ARP. Actually, this is not is not part of the Ethernet. So ARP is it's a combination. Uh, yeah, ARP means address resolution protocols. Okay, so it's a it's a, a protocol that is mapping, not bridging, mapping mapping between that does mapping between IPv4 and MAC address. Okay, I said IPv4, not just IP. Okay, why? Because this will be eliminated in IPv6. Okay. So there is no IP, uh, there is no ARP in IPv6. Okay. Why? Because uh, ARP requests broadcast frame. And then if if you have lots of uh, hosts in one segment and one layer, two segment, and then there will be a, a, a huge broadcast traffic <laughs> in that that segment okay so everyone received that, those broadcasts because broadcast by definition is is a frame where everyone get okay yeah oh i can hear some sounds here who is it okay please turn on your microphone okay so this is how it looks like uh yeah so this is step one this is step two Okay, so PC number one wants to send PC number five. They know the IP address, but they don't know the MAC address. Okay, so I was asking 
Uh, what is the MAC address of uh, 183.168.0.5? Yeah. Well, you know, because you can see here the diagram. <laughs> oh, here it is. But uh, please thinking computationally, okay? If you are a computer, what, need, what needs to be done to do the job, okay? So, okay, I have an idea. Okay, we have a ARP. So here we call it ARP. ARP request. Okay, and then here we have ARP reply. Okay, ARP request. And then this one is broadcast. Okay, this is the things that we don't like for ARP. Okay. Uh, when everyone receive, oh, okay, so only particular host will reply. So from here to there is not broadcast. It's a, a unicast, so one to one. Okay, so that's how it looks like. And then this is how the frame looks like. As I said, the type is here and then it explains the payload. Okay, and the, 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 the art will be, looks like this. Uh, we have a search MAC address, target MAC address, and then so on and so forth. Okay, so <clears throat> that's how it looks like. Okay, the art uh, reply and art request. Uh, we know that um, okay, we know that uh, Ethernet also um, keeps improving, okay, and never stop. Unlike FDDI or FIDI, <laughs> that already did many years ago because of the limitation of the protocol and then the hardware and then many stuff, okay. Ethernet is still evolving. So you can see blah, 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 blah. And then this is, this is when I learned. Yeah, so we have twisted pair, we have coaxial, where's the coaxial cable? TX, yeah, around here. Oh yeah, yeah, this one I use, okay. I'm using a 10 base two, 10 base five. So this is the one that I use when I learned, <laughs> I learned uh, networking for the first time. <laughs> I use coaxial cable, man. I uh, see, coaxial cable. Yeah, why? Because that one is, is, is the cheapest, okay? We want to send data uh, over, over cables, yeah? Instead of sending data through floppy disk, Remember floppy disk? <laughs> there is no USB thumb drive. <laughs> okay, floppy disk. And then let's keep improving. Okay, so we have uh, 100 base. So 100 Mbps, yeah. Twisted pair. And uh, we have uh, 10G here. Uh, let's keep Im Im improving the, the, the speeds. And then here's the, here's the uh, uh, standards, okay, defined by IEEE. And never stop, never stop, and uh, still evolving. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, in 2018, uh, uh, 16, 17, uh, whatever you can, you can read it yourself. So the thing is, the the speed for the internet is keep uh, higher and higher. For example, we we have reached uh, 100 gig, okay, and then. Uh, there will be a uh, 200 and then 400 gig, okay. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so uh, yeah, um, Ethernet is still evolving yeah, because of the of the nature. <laughs> uh, yeah, people would like to use affordable technology for their network. Yeah, so we know how the Ethernet works and then uh, there will be some issues related to that. Yeah, first is collision domains. So it's the place where collision happens. Okay, so in this case, all of them will have a collision domain. Okay, yeah, some ideas to overcome this is uh, you can switch network. Okay, so instead of using a hub, you can use switch here. So we just replace we just replace the 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 device, the central device. Okay. So every connection is the collision domain. So collision only happens in this area, okay? Either this 
this, this, or this. So in this picture, we remove, we turn uh, from one collision, collision domain into four collision domain. Okay. So every port at the switch is is your collision domain. How how is it work? Because of the switch. Yeah, because of the technology of the switch. So this is switch, and then switch has ports. Okay. You have five port switch here. So for example, you have a send data here, and then switch will analyze the destination MAC address. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. The des destination MAC address is here. Okay. So switch will put the micro segmentation bit inside. So it's done by switch chip here. Okay, so only port one and five are connected for that for that particular traffic. Okay. And then so there is no so port number two, three, and four never know uh, the never know the, the, the traffic. Only port one and five. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the, the magic of how how we can split the collision domain from one big collision domain to a smaller collision domain using switches. Okay, switch. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> switch switch network now is is very common, so we don't have any issue with that. Uh, next is about uh, broadcast domain. <clears throat> So instead of um, so broadcast domain is 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 the area where where um, it can be reached by a, a broadcast frame, for example. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we have a switch here, and then we have a repeater over here, and then we have a host, 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 and switch. Okay. So. Uh, Instead of uh, using one uh, broad, uh, broadcast domain, uh, yeah, uh, we can split them. Yeah, so yeah, we try to use five, four, three, two, one rules. Yes, yeah, like a, we have switch, switch, switch. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Switch. Yeah. So if you stack the switch, so. Make sure no more than four switches. So you have a segment here, another segment, another segment, uh, yeah, switch, a segment, and then segment. Okay, so segment, 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 segment. So it five means five segment four switches and then three of them is using uh, is is the is the segment with host okay so three segments and then two two is I forgot the two and then one is one one uh, broadcast domain okay yeah. Yeah, so if you use switch, uh, please do not stack the switch or daisy change the switch more than four. Okay. Yeah, yeah, some ideas. Well, you can we can split. So in the beginning, we have a one broadcast domain. Okay, so we put the a router here. So we have a router over here and here. So uh, by doing this, we can split the broadcast domain to become this one, this one, and this one. Okay. Yeah, so, so router is to split the segments, the, the broadcast domain, or we can use, I think, uh, yeah, for some situation, we can use port isolation. So it means that you have a switch, okay, port one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for example, this is port one and seven. So we can do like isolation. Okay. Yeah, so each port, so this is like a, a port that goes to upstream. 
Okay, so <clears throat> five, six. So we can do port isolations. Uh, I put a C, I, 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 okay. So uh, uh, traffic from port two and port three is not allowed here. So port two and three is not allowed. Port two and four is not allowed. Port two and five is not allowed. Okay, so it's, it's called port isolation. Yeah, so that one, yeah, for to some extent, it is also good for security and reducing uh, broadcast traffic as well. Okay. Yeah, it's called port isolation. In in Microtik, we can use uh, bridge horizon. Okay, so uh, all ports with the same horizon will not be able to talk to each other. In Ubiquiti, we, there is a the concept is called uh, port isolation in Netonics. Switch also the same. Uh, I think in uh, uh, TP Link also same same things so that the, the the feature that is that they called. Okay, so uh, we are we are isolating the port. Okay. Uh, next problems that could happen in a switch network is loop. <laughs> it's very common. Okay, so you have a switch here, switch here, switch here. You have a very crowded network. <laughs> yeah, it happens in my clients. Uh, yeah, they they are they are going for cheaper solution. Yeah, that you just bought. Sorry, uh, somebody is saying something. No, okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah, loop. Yeah, so this is how loop looks like. So you have a switch. You connect switch to here. From here, connect to there. And unfortunately, somebody connect uh, from other switch to the other switch as well. So they're thinking that, oh, okay, so what happened is the cable here is broken. So we still have other cables. Yes, that's that's the, 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 the root cause <laughs> of the problem, yeah? So what happened is if somebody send a broadcast network, a broadcast frame, okay? So this is broadcast frame BF, okay? And then that broadcast frame will be forwarded to here and then to here, correct? Yeah. And then from here, because it's broadcast, the switch thinks that, oh, okay, this is broadcast frame. So I need to broadcast to other port as well. So I will broadcast to this. And then this one will broadcast to that. Okay, see, see the problem, okay? Because it's broadcast, broadcast sending everywhere to every switch. Okay, and then you will see that if, if, if a broadcast happens here, if the loop happens, if the loop happens, we call it, uh, sometimes we call it broadcast storm. Okay, and uh, sort of like that. And then uh, this issue, yeah, will be solved if one of the cable is unplugged. Okay, <laughs> so this is the dangerous, the dangerous thing. Okay, so well, some ideas. Uh, do not use traditional switch. Okay, please, please, don't use them. Yeah, it, yes, I know it's cheaper. If you have very simple network that only ex, uh, consists of one switch, yes, you can use it. That traditional switch, that's fine. And yeah, okay, so uh, you are not using traditional switch. Okay, so what kind of you what kind of switch do you use? Well, the switch that can support well at least STP, spanning tree protocol is called spanning tree protocol. Okay. Yeah, I will there will be a webinar talking about the spanning tree protocol later. And then also can be uh, port isolation. Yeah, yeah. At least uh, that one could help to some extent. But uh, yeah, I, I would prefer to have a STP here. Okay. Okay. So that if this one happens, and then this port here will detect. Oh, okay, there will be a loop here. Okay, and then of course I will disable the port automatically. Okay, that was loop. Uh, security, yeah, security also uh, a big concern in the 
micro tick okay so yeah uh yeah we can we can apply security on network okay we can apply authentication authorization um accounting so it's called triple a yeah so ideas is uh, we can apply dot one x or captive portal or MAC address authentications yeah uh problem issue with captive portal is you already have an ip address because uh, there will be a DHCP. So it means that you already have an IP address. You're already in to the network, but you cannot move forward unless you do authentication. That's that's the issue. So what happens if you do lots of uh, DHCP attack? <clears throat> so all the DHCP pool has been running out. Okay, So a new guest will not get an IP address. Okay? So that's that's an attack of uh, the HCP. Yeah, that can be it's possible to to happen as well. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Or uh, we have a dot one x. So before you log in, there will be a authentication uh, for that. Okay. So or a MAC address. So not everyone is allowed. Yeah, until you register, you register your MAC address. But that can, be, uh, yeah, that can be override. Yeah, we can <laughs> rewrite our MAC address, right? Logically, and then send through our uh, networking stack over the operating system. So guys, uh, I think that's all. Any issue? No? Well, yeah, uh, perhaps I can just show some of the issue here any questions so far no. Okay, let me show a Hmm. Mm. Oh, is it in? Oh, okay. Okay, let me log in to the to one of the servers. Okay, so perhaps we can see it here. yeah so this is an example okay so guys if you have any questions uh yeah please uh, say something in the group chat okay <clears throat> yeah so uh this is an example yeah troubleshooting the internet <clears throat> is uh, we start from the lowest layer right so we check here and the cable test uh, is the cable pair is okay or not yeah sometimes <laughs> Uh, we, we are thinking too far okay yeah perhaps I, I should i should check it from there as well and then here's the status okay and also
Okay, let me check. ACA. TPPP. Okay, so here it is. So let me try to log into my uh, routers. Okay, wait a moment. Hopefully, I can do that. Oh, okay, not so. I cannot go through. Hmm. Yeah, so here it is. Uh, um, okay, let's do the uh, bridge. Okay, so if you are doing bridge and then on the port. <clears throat> oh, okay, it's off. Looks like it's off. Oops. Ah, it's failed. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah, so I cannot access the 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 Yeah, I cannot access the router here. So let me check. Yeah, any questions so far before while well, well, I'm 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 trying to accessing the the, the, the routers. And it, oh, where is my where is my slide? Oops. Okay, maybe this one here. <clears throat> yeah, so this is how Ethernet looks like. Okay, so usually uh, we start the uh, troubleshooting from the lowest layer. Okay, you check the auto negotiation or flow control, uh, checking whether you do, <coughs> you activate or deactivate the auto negotiation. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that could be a, a source of problem as well. And also checking the statistic. Yeah, this one is okay. How many broadcasts, multicasts, and also the statistic over here. Okay. Usually if you have something on this, okay. Uh, yeah, something something is not right with the with your connection okay yeah it's going to be one six yeah 
also for bridge here uh yeah we can call it horizons okay so uh, all port with the same horizons uh will not be able to talk to each other so it means that uh all of them here all of them are okay okay horizon is nothing so uh, each part of this they can they can talk to each other okay so that's the purpose for uh, bridge horizon uh anything else hello no <laughs> seems like everyone is is enjoying the webinar hopefully <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't have something to say. So more of uh, the things today is 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 perhaps uh, is the 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 basic, not the basic, the the yeah the the things that you can do for improving your layer two connectivity. Yeah, so first you have a collision domain, first broadcast domain. And third is loop. This is important. Okay, really, really important. Uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, security. Yeah. So for implementation, you can use uh, switch, uh, port isolations, STP, and then apply uh, some security um, protocols on your network. Well, I think uh, that's all. Uh, still no questions okay if no questions and then yeah so yeah i would like to say thank you for your attention uh please submit your feedback here i will paste them on uh, group chat okay so yeah yeah, so here it is. Uh, this is our website. And then you can see many information over here. Yes, yeah, so where is it? Yeah, so the all recordings <coughs> will be available in the gallery. So actually this is the page where we post our, our past events. So our training documentation will be here as well. Okay, uh, for the future, the schedule will be here. So as you can see, <clears throat> in November, or oh, list, we can use list. Yes, so we have, yeah, we have, we have some stuff over here. Yeah, uh, we have a training as well. And then, and then the, the, the webinar list. Oh yeah, here it is. So I think we can see it better here over here. So there will be a webinar and then training. Uh, yeah, if you are interested, just contact our our admin. So just send email to contact at glcnetworks.com. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm, re uh, recording will be available on YouTube, but we will post it as well. So as you can see, uh, this is the recording from the past event. And then you can uh, access the presentation slide and then the recording over here. So yeah, we make it uh, simple yeah, so that you don't have to go there and then search by yourself. Okay, I have a question. So I learned programming too. How my program like Python can be running in the network? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so did the... the yeah, learn programming question, how my program like Python can be running in the network. Well, uh, we use Python for mostly for, for automation. Okay. So for example, I think in the past webinar, we, I have, I've, I've shown you um, a script where we, we develop a script to, to develop the um, uh, uh, firewall rules. Okay, so the firewall rules even though if you delete them or whatever, so we can replace with the script. Yeah. So that's just one one benefit if you if you know programming. You can do automation. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, I think that's all. I think can be run in the network. Yeah, yeah. So for automation. <clears throat> also, if you know programming, and then that there is an SDN. So uh, for you to to have an alternative for for yeah to to run it in the network. Okay. Uh, SDN software defined network, where we split the control plane and then data plane. Right. Uh, yeah. It's. I think it's it's time for a photo session. So guys, if you don't mind, please turn on your cameras, and then uh, we'll take a picture. Uh -huh. Okay. So I will count one, two, three. One, two, three. Oops. One thumbs up. Okay. One, two, and three. Yeah. One more. One, two, and three. You <laughs> guys, thank you very much for coming. Uh, yeah, this is the end of the slides. So if you don't mind, again, uh, please submit your um, feedback. Yeah, it's very important for us. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, next time, I think we can discuss uh, automation for for networking. Yeah, and then yeah, at least you know some some example of a Python script where we can use it to 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 send commands to Microtik. So the the concept is we have we have our controller over here, okay, and where we put our Python script over there, and then we have the another nodes where we are managing uh, through the control nodes okay so from this control node we send command through to 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 the to the manage node manage nodes like a yeah it's like a, a master and slave <laughs> yeah yeah the the the, the, the words in it is sometimes very very racial yeah like a blacklist and whitelist you know it's very racist <laughs> Uh, we have a master and a slave. <laughs> okay, guys. So again, thank you very much. And then see you in the next webinar. Uh, have a nice day. Uh, yeah, keep safe. And then, yeah, have a good day. Thank you again. And uh, good evening for everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.